Vanguard Life Strategy Funds offer new investors a really simple way to get started. You literally just need one fund in your portfolio, which is already diversified and fairly cheap. But of course, they do have certain drawbacks, which we'll discuss in this video. And I'll also discuss how to copy life strategy funds and make them significantly cheaper. And for people who are our Patreon supporters, we'll also offer a spreadsheet so that you can work out exactly how those portfolios work. And if you want to become a Patreon supporter and learn all about how to invest and join our community and also join our Slack group and get access to all of our members only videos, then you can do that by clicking on the description below me and the link beside me. So let's find out about life strategy funds in a bit more detail. So what are Vanguard life strategy funds? Well, firstly, it's not just one fund. It's a group of funds which are graded according to their risk. Now, because the value of assets are always increasing and decreasing, there has to be some work behind the scenes to keep everything in balance. All of that rebalancing is done behind the scenes for you. Now, the way in which life strategy is constructed is using other Vanguard funds. So it is literally a fund of funds. And consequently, it contains thousands of equities and thousands of bonds. And it's diversified across country, across different asset types and across sectors. So that reduces your risk because if any one sector or country crashes, you'll be diversified in other regions and other asset types. Now, because these life strategy funds are risk graded, you only have to make one choice, and that's to find the level of risk which you're happy with. And there are two things which feed into that, as we'll see. Here are the life strategy funds available to UK investors. And as you can see, there are five of them, and the one above me is the one with least risk. Now, below me, you'll see that that's also consistent with a shorter term goal. Why is that? Well, let's say you want to buy a house in about three years time. If the equity market crashes over that period of time, you could be facing a shortfall. And for that reason, you probably don't want to take too much risk and you'll have more money in government bonds, which tend to not crash as frequently or as deeply as equity. But over a long period of time, those bonds will underperform. So you wouldn't want to have a low risk fund if you're investing for a much longer period of time, say more than 10 years. If that's the case, then it would be more appropriate to go for something like Life Strategy 100, which is completely allocated in equity. Now, you may not sleep as well at night because it's certainly more volatile. The price moves up and down much more over time with equity funds. But the benefit of going on that scary ride is that you'll be rewarded with a higher long term return. Equities over the long term, and here we're talking about decades, outperform bonds. Now, the other consideration is how much risk appetite you've got. Some people just don't like risk. If that's the case, then it would be more sensible to have a lower amount of equity in your portfolio. Maybe not life strategy 100, but maybe life strategy 80 or 60 over the long term. But bear in mind that that will have an impact on your returns. They will be lower. The ongoing fee that you pay for these funds is quite low. It's just 0.22% every year. That means for every £10,000 that you invest, you'd pay £22 a year. That never actually comes out of your account. It's just subtracted from your daily returns. There are also life strategy funds for US investors. Again, it's risk graded, going from 20% equity up to 80%. Notice that there's no 100% equity portfolio. If that's what you want, you just go for a global equity tracker. And if you want to learn more about global equity trackers, I've also made a video about that. And the fee for these US Vanguard funds is significantly lower than it is in the UK, between 0.11% and 0.14% per year. Coming back to the UK funds, let's imagine that we invested £100 in each of the five life strategy funds just as they were created in June 2011. Now, even though the general trend has been upwards, you can see that it hasn't been a smooth ride. And if you look at the pink one, you can see that it's the most wiggly of the five. The financial term for wiggliness is volatility. And volatility means you don't sleep well at night when markets crash, because a Life Strategy 100 fund 
will be the one which crashes the most. But if you look at the value of Life Strategy 100, which is the highest risk portfolio, you can see the compensation for not sleeping well at night has been very good. Your £100 will have turned into about £264 over that period of time. Whereas if you'd gone for the safer Life Strategy 20 fund, where it's only 20% equity and 80% bonds, you'd have slept better at night, but you'd have earned less money. Your £100 would have turned into just £173. So that's why if you're investing for a long period of time, you want to take as much risk and as much equity as you can stomach. But now let's look at what happens during a market crash, and in particular the one that happened in 2020 during the pandemic. So again, we're going to track the value of £100 invested in each of those five life strategy funds. But this time, will have invested at the worst possible moment, just before the equity market sold off. Well now, everything's gone into reverse. Life Strategy 100, which is pure equity, is the one that sold off the most. And Life Strategy 20, which is only 20% equity, fell the least. It only fell by 9%. But if we look at Life Strategy 100, you can see it fell much more. It fell by 27%. And of course, at the bottom, nobody knew that it wasn't going to fall further. So you had to have nerves of steel not to sell at that point. And that's the difficulty. When equity markets crash, we're tempted to sell. But of course, we should do exactly the opposite. That would have been a great time to buy equity. So if you are going to buy a life strategy fund with lots of equity in it, just be prepared for those kinds of crashes. And if possible, try and get yourself into the mindset of seeing crashes as sales, an opportunity to buy at a lower price. And that way you get a better long-term return. And it's already the case that Life Strategy 100 has pulled ahead of the rest of the pack. And that's because equity markets have rebounded really quickly and hugely during this crisis. If we look at those five funds on a risk return plot, so here on the bottom axis you can see a region of high risk here on the right, low risk here on the left, and low returns here at the bottom, and high returns here at the top. Notice what it looks like when we join the dots on these life strategy funds. As we go from low risk, life strategy 20, up to high risk with life strategy 100, the returns gradually increase. The annualized return for the Life Strategy 100 fund, which is pure equity, has been over 10% every year during that 11-year period. But it's also been high risk. The typical annual percentage price move of that fund is around 14%. Whereas Life Strategy 20's return has been much lower, less than 6% every year, although the typical percentage price move year to year is around 4%. So it wiggles around much less, which is why you sleep better at night. So now let's talk about the difficulties with life strategy. And the first one for UK life strategy is domestic bias. Now the entire UK market is roughly the same size as a single stock in the US, which is Apple. And in fact, if you look at the UK market size for equity compared to the entire global market, it's around 4%. But that's not the case with life strategy funds. In fact, there's a very large overweight for UK equity. And when I contacted Vanguard Support to ask why that's the case, they said that that was due to client demand. They say that UK investors want home buyers. They want to invest in the market with which they're most familiar. Now, the actual weights of the Vanguard Life Strategy Funds are determined by a committee that meets every year. And what they've chosen is a 25% equity allocation for the UK and a 35% UK allocation in the bond space. The rest of the portfolio is according to the size of the market, or global market cap as it's called. And what they say is that the domestic overweight is roughly triple. Now what I've done here is to break down Life Strategy 20 up to 100 according to the funds in which it's invested, and I've broken it down by region. And sure enough, for Life Strategy 100, the UK weighting for equity is 25%. But if UK equity is 4% of global equity markets, that's more than a six-fold overweight for UK equity. Now, if the UK outperforms massively, that's not a problem, but that hasn't been the case over the last decade. So let's repeat the exercise where we invest £100 into each of the five life strategy funds in 2011. But what we've added this time 
is a developed world excluding UK fund, which is shown above me here. So whereas Life Strategy 100 would have turned your money into £264, if we go for developed markets, that's primarily the US, that would have turned your £100 into £321. So what's clear is that over the last 11 years, that huge UK overweight has been a massive drag on performance. Another problem with Life Strategy is that it's really not that cheap. In fact, they're almost double the fee of their US equivalents. So can we make it cheaper? Well, in fact, we can. And I'm going to use Life Strategy 60 as an example. Notice the fee for that fund is 0.22%. Remember that number. Now, as we've seen, Life Strategy funds are just portfolios of other Vanguard funds. And for Life Strategy 60, this is the composition of that fund as of April 2021. So Life Strategy 60 is in fact 18 funds, but each of them has a different weighting. So if you invest £100 in Life Strategy 60, £19 would be invested in this Developed World X UK fund. 18.9% would be invested in this Global Bond Index fund, and so on down the list. So what we're going to try and do is choose cheaper funds which magically reproduce the returns of the fund as closely as possible. The returns won't be identical, but we'll make them as close as we possibly can. And it turns out that you really just need five funds to reproduce Life Strategy 60. You don't need all of the ones that you saw in that list. So if you have 40% of the Developed World XUK fund, 16% of the FTSE All Share, and so on down the list, you can reproduce the returns of Life Strategy 60. And if we look at the cumulative return of Life Strategy 60 versus that very simple and cheap portfolio, the blue line is Life Strategy 60 here, and the red line is the portfolio. And although there is a bit of a mismatch, you can see periods where the blue moves away from the red. On the whole, that simplified portfolio tracks Life Strategy 60 very closely. But the whole point was to make this cheaper, so how much does that portfolio cost? Well, what we do is we take the portfolio weights and we multiply it by the fees of the funds, and the weighted average is 0.12%. That's significantly less than the 0.22% for Life Strategy 60. In fact, we've almost cut our fee in half. What's the drawback? Well, the drawback is that you have to rebalance your portfolio. You don't have to do that very often, but maybe once a year would be a good idea. Or if markets have moved a lot and you've moved away from those long-term weights. So it worked pretty well for Life Strategy 60, which we can see here. What would happen if we tried it for the other Life Strategy funds, like Life Strategy 100 or Life Strategy 20? It turns out these are the portfolio weights which work pretty well. And if you do want the precise numbers for this portfolio, that will be available to Patreon supporters in the form of a spreadsheet. So if you want access to that, just click on the link. And if you're not a member, you can sign up. If you are a member, you get instant access to the spreadsheet. So in this graph, you can see the life strategy returns in blue and the portfolio returns in red. And you can see they track each other pretty closely. You don't have to use Vanguard funds to reproduce those returns. You could also use iShares funds. Beside me here are seven funds which I found work very well for reproducing those returns. And you can see the portfolio weights which are required as the bar plot beside me. And again, if you want those precise numbers, they'll be available in a spreadsheet for supporters on Patreon. And you can see they track life strategy funds fairly well for all five funds. So we can either use Vanguard funds to copy the life strategy returns, or we can use iShares funds. The irony is that iShares funds can do it cheaper. So for example, for Life Strategy 60, Vanguard funds cost 0.12% and iShares funds just 0.1%. So if you do use iShares funds to copy Life Strategy returns, then you can literally do it for less than half the fee. Now the other benefit of this replication method is that you might want to twiddle the weights. You don't have to stick to what Vanguard's used. Let's say you worry about ESG, well, you could just plug in an ESG fund for the equivalent global equity fund. The replication of returns won't be as accurate, but if you want ESG, why not? And if you don't want the UK overweight, which is built into life strategy, you could just dial it down and reallocate to another 
global equity fund, say. So I think this approach of splitting up life strategy also gives you a greater flexibility in terms of your allocation. So while you have the cost of greater complexity, you also have the greater flexibility of being able to wiggle the weights a little bit the way you like them. Now, there are a couple of really good alternatives to life strategy which are now available in the UK. And these have been launched after life strategy came to the market. The first one, which isn't really cheaper than Vanguard, it's about the same fee, are the HSBC Global Strategy Portfolios. Now, just like Vanguard Life Strategy, they're risk graded. And as you dial up the amount of equity, you'd go from cautious up to adventurous. Now, the fee that you'd pay for these HSBC Global Strategy Funds is around 0.23%, very similar to Vanguard's 0.22% with life strategy. There's no real fee benefit, but if you don't want the huge UK overweight that you get with life strategy, these HSBC funds don't have it. They're much closer to market cap weighting. If we look at the risk return plot, just above me you can see life strategy 60 here. If we had an equivalent HSBC fund, you can see its return would be higher, significantly higher in fact. And the primary reason for that is the UK equity overweight with life strategy. And that's been a big drag on returns, which hasn't been there for the equivalent HSBC funds. With the exception of the lowest risk portfolio here at the bottom, the cautious one, the HSBC funds give you a higher return for that level of risk than you'd have got with life strategy. Of course, this is backward looking, so it may not reflect future returns, but unless you think the UK is going to massively outperform, I think this makes the case for using HSBC's funds rather than Vanguard's. Now, BlackRock has also come up with an alternative family of funds called MyMap, and these are risk graded from MyMap 3, which is the lowest risk, all the way to MyMap 6, which is the highest. And the equity allocation goes from 27% for MyMap 3 up to 80% for MyMap 6. And one of those funds, MyMap 5, also comes in an ESG version. So if ethical investing is important to you, then perhaps you'd consider something like MyMap 5, but ESG. But what's really noticeable is the fee. That's just 0.17%, which is significantly less than Vanguard's 0.22. That's all the more remarkable because this is an active fund. Now, normally you'd pay much more for an active fund than a passive fund, but that's not the case here. And if we look at the risk return plot, again, you can see that my map lies significantly above the line that you'd get with life strategy. So for a given level of risk, the return on my map has been higher in this period between 2019 and May 2021. And that's the period since my map was launched. It's still early days, but it certainly looks like this is a promising alternative to life strategy, particularly given its lower fee. Now let's consider life strategy alternatives in the US. And the short answer is that there aren't many. And that's because Vanguard's fee in the US for life strategy is so competitive. The nearest thing I could find amongst popular multi-asset funds were these iShares core allocation funds. However, the fee for these is significantly higher than it is for Vanguard at 0.25%. But if you are into ethical investing, one reason you might go for the iShares equivalent is that they offer ESG multi-asset funds. And the fee for those is actually lower than it is for the non-ESG equivalents, so just 0.18% every year. Now, this being the US, the time series go back a lot further. So I can extend this analysis all the way back to 2008. And over that period, the return certainly hasn't been spectacular compared to the US equity market. So even the most aggressive allocation, the one with the most equity, has only achieved returns of around 8% per year, whereas the S&P has been closer to around 12%. And if you go for the tech-heavy NASDAQ, that's achieved an annual return of over 20%. But notice that that also comes with a much higher risk. The volatility of this NASDAQ tracker, QQQ, is a shade under 22% per year. So one might expect that in a market downturn, QQQ and SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, would fall much more than those diversified iShares funds. So if you're just starting out an investment, I think these multi-asset funds are great. And now that they've been vanguarded, it's forced everybody to reduce their fees so we have more choice, which is great for us as investors. And as you get more experienced as an investor, maybe you'll want to go into this 
alternative way of allocating where you do individual funds. And using those portfolios which I've created might be a good starting point for your portfolio. Now, you don't have to support us on Patreon. We also have supporters directly here on YouTube. Now, if you do that, you get a beautiful crown next to your name. So when we do a YouTube live, we'll know you're one of our supporters and your question will get answered first. And also in the comments, we always try and answer the questions from our YouTube supporters. And if you want to do that, you can just click on the link in the description and the link beside me. And as always, thank you for listening.